everybody. We are the Ngala family from Kenya. My name is Amani. My name is Lulu. My name is Joyce. My name is Tobias. We are so happy to come to you today and to join you in this special service. We pray that God will use this service today to really lead many people to know Him, to love Him, and to walk with Him. Over the last few months, and very much the last one year, we have sensed the Lord place in our hearts the desire and the call to come to London and to join forces with Restore Community Church to reach many people for Jesus. We are in the process of putting together what is required for us to come there, so we ask you to continue praying with us. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, and it's the NIV version. After the death of Moses, servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, my, my servant Moses is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon, from the and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you in all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God, will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. At this time, let's bow our heads and pray for Ian as he comes to speak to us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your servant Ian as he comes to share God's word and vision today. Use him in a very special way. Use his words to come through to us so that we're able to understand your will and intention for our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to have Tobias and Joyce be able to join us from Uganda, wasn't it? And Tobias has been working for the last few years for an organization called New Think. And New Think basically is a, is a global uh, relational organization that, that gathers together churches that carry a similar heart and vision and passion, which is to live on mission in their everyday life and see the kingdom of God come here on earth and uh, God's will being done here on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, Tobias and Joyce have felt for a little while like the Lord is calling them to come to London. And so New Thing are helping, they're partnering with them to be able to send them as missionaries over to London, hopefully to come and join with us. So we'll be looking forward to receiving them in a few months' time and uh, being able to uh, get the benefit of their skills, their wisdom. They've been church planting for a number of years in Kenya, so it's very, very exciting to have them as a family and great to have them as a part of today. Today, as Jody said, is a Vision Sunday. Now, Vision Sunday is all about seeing, and it's about seeing 
what God is doing and seeing where God is leading us. And the reality is uh, that this last year has been quite extraordinary, hasn't it? I don't know how many times we said that on a Sunday morning, probably every single week. But the truth is we've had an event that is probably once in a lifetime. The last time there was a pandemic like it, 1918. So over 100 years ago, uh, that was the Spanish flu that time, uh, this time COVID-19. We've never had a year like this before, and that has had many, many challenges for many, many of us. I think it's no coincidence that we've ended up doing this Vision Sunday exactly one year on from the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, we must say a big shout out to our tech team that have enabled us to function and do church so well through that year. They are absolutely amazing and a real gift from heaven that's resourced us in this time. But the truth is, although this year has been hard, although this year has had many challenges, God has still been at work. God has still been with us, God has still been leading us, and God has still been guiding us. And I think that's really important to recognise, because otherwise in our minds, we can kind of view this last year as an interruption where everything stopped, and then it's like everything's going to start again, and we're just going to pick up where we left off. And that isn't going to be the case, because God has been at work over the last year. And as we uh, step into the next stage of our journey together as Restore, what we need to do is we need to see what God has been doing. We need to listen to what God has been speaking. And then we need to align our hearts and our wills with that and step into the new that he's doing. And so that's what I want to talk about and share on today. Now, if you've hung around Restore for a little while, one of the phrases that we've used at many times is keep it simple. If I was going to give the full phrase, it would be keep it simple, stupid. That's because um, God knows that my intellect isn't necessarily great. And so he has to say things very, very clearly to me. And uh, it, actually in life, life gets so complicated sometimes and church can get so complicated sometimes. Sometimes we miss the very essence and the very heart of what God has called us to and what we're all about. And the interesting thing about keep it simple is keep it simple isn't always as easy as it looks. That sounds great, but it's not always easy um, managing to do simple things. Look at Jodie and her craft this morning. <laughs> looks so simple when Isaac did it, not so simple when Jodie did it. But sometimes it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of focus to keep it really simple and to keep the main thing the main thing. Now, a year ago, when uh, the whole of uh, uh, life as we knew it got interrupted, the first thing we did was panic, um, and then we got hold of, of Jesus, and then we tried to work out how we were going to do church in this next season. And uh, thankfully, because of the gifting and the generosity of people like the Andersons and uh, Richard, we've been able to live stream in the way that we have and make it through this season. The very next thing we did, though, once we kind of readjusted the, the in phrase at the time was to pivot, um, once we pivoted to a new normal, the next thing that we did as a, as a core leadership team was we said, well, what are the things that we've never got around to that actually are really key for us going forward? And over the last year, we spent a lot of time looking at those things and trying to hone in to the key things that God has called us to. And the way I see it is, is, is I see it, it's, it's, it's a little bit like, like uh, the church is a bit like an arrow and uh, the Lord has a calling for us and he wants to fire us towards the center of that target, the center towards everything he's called us to. But if we're not really sharp at the end, then it's so hard to cut through and quite often we can miss the target. And so one of the things we've been praying over this uh, last year is, is, Lord, will you sharpen us? Lord, will you give us that clarity? Lord, will you give us that focus? That means we know really, really what we're called to and then we can step into it and we can lead the whole of Restore on that journey, which is what God has called us to. So part of our keeping it simple is we ask the Lord to give us a sentence that would sum up everything that we're about as Restore. And the sentence the Lord gave us was this one. It was, we welcome everyone to walk with Jesus every day and see restoration everywhere. I'm going to say that again. We welcome everyone to walk with Jesus every day and see restoration everywhere. And you'll see from the slides, uh, three words highlighted on that. Everyone, every day, everywhere. 
And uh, I'll give a little bit of a definition to each of those words because I think they're key words that the Lord has given us for keeping it simple, to keep focused the heart of everything that God's called us to. So firstly, the everyone. We believe that every person is uniquely made in the image of God and is deserving of being embraced, valued and honoured as such. And we do. Everyone is handcrafted by a loving Heavenly Father who's made them unique with gifting and calling and potential. And he wants us to see people like that, treat people like that, embrace people like that, and love out God's original design for their life. Everyone. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is included. Everyone has a part to play because everyone is special and handcrafted by God. Everyone. Every day. We believe that true discipleship is a wholehearted and whole life commitment to follow Jesus. And so is an everyday living out of his values. Do you know, when Jesus called the first disciples to follow him, it wasn't just walk with me on a Sunday or walk with me for two hours. It was a leave behind your nets and follow me, live the whole of your life with me. And I believe a real follower of Jesus surrenders everything, just like Jody did at the end of the worship time in terms of bowing the knee and says, Lord Jesus, the whole of my life, I give to you. The whole of my life, I live for you. The whole of my life, I want to walk with you. The whole of my life, I want to live according to your word and your ways and your values. The whole of my life is surrendered to you. And so as a church, we're not a church that's all about Sunday. Sundays are important. Gatherings are important. God calls us uh, uh, to uh, not to neglect those because they're significant parts. But our gatherings are the equipping, the empowering, the filling of the Spirit of God that then means we can live the rest of our lives on mission for Jesus. Because our calling is to welcome everyone, to walk with Jesus every day, and to see restoration everywhere. What do we mean by that? Well, the word everywhere means we believe that Jesus came to share God's love everywhere and to establish more of the life of heaven on earth. He started with those most in need and worked out from there. And we as a church, we seek to do exactly the same as Jesus. And sometimes in churches, they have a special category of people that they call missionaries. Normally, it's a group of people who feel a call to other nations and they go overseas. We don't believe that missionaries is a special category. We believe that everyone is called to live a life on mission to Jesus, for Jesus. So tomorrow, you might be working in a school. You might be working in the city, or at least online, connecting to a job that used to be based in the city. Um, You might be at the local supermarket working. You might be a stay-at-home dad. You are called to bring the kingdom of God in, and you are a full-time missionary to bring the kingdom of God into the context, the place, the community that the Lord has placed you to be a part of. And as a church, we believe that everyone is welcome. Everyone is called to live every day with Jesus and then to be the means that God can use to bring the kingdom of God everywhere. Everyone, every day, everywhere. And as a church, we get our name from Isaiah 61, verse 4. You might have been with us uh, about 12 years ago when we went on a journey of hearing afresh what the name that God was speaking over us as Restore. And uh, the word that God spoke over us was the word Restore. And in Isaiah 61, verse 4, it talks about restoring the places that are long devastated, rebuilding the ancient ruins. And what's interesting is Isaiah 61 is a key passage because when Jesus comes from heaven to earth, in Luke chapter 4, and he picks, he could have picked any piece of scripture in the Old Testament to define his ministry with, but he didn't pick any old scripture. He picked Isaiah 61, and he quoted it in Luke chapter 4, 
and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If you know your Old Testament history, the year of the Lord's flavor, favor, fa- flavor, <laughs> so it's a good flavor, the fragrance of Jesus. I'm mixing too many metaphors. Anyway, I'll ignore that and carry on now. But the year of the Lord's favor was the year of Jubilee. And that was the year debts were forgiven, slaves were set free. A trumpet would herald a change of life over Israel, over the whole nation. Jesus came to blow that trumpet and to declare freedom. And if you follow through Isaiah 61, which is a description of what Jubilee looks like, there's three words that you can distill that passage uh, down into. And three words beginning by R. You can see we're trying to make it very simple. Everyone... Every day, everywhere. Now, in Isaiah 61, you can distill it down, our mission to three words. And they're these three words, uh, reconcile, restore, and rebuild. Reconcile, restore, and rebuild. Now, what do we mean by that? By reconcile, we mean this. To see as many people as possible from every walk of life encounter God's love and goodness and have the opportunity to be reconciled in relationship with him. Isaiah 61 kicks off and says, the spirit of God is on me to bring good news to the poor. Literally, that word uh, that's used there for poor means to the broken. The spirit of God is on us as a church, that we might be good news to the broken. Good news to the broken is you can be reconciled to God. You can be reconciled to your maker, and he can bring wholeness into your brokenness. And as a church, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it's a uh, well-known passage of scripture because Paul in it talks about uh, when we come to Jesus, we become new creations and the old is gone, the new has come. The very next couple of verses talk about that Jesus was God's love gift to humanity to reconcile us to God. And then it goes on and says, we carry as God's church, as God's people, we carry a ministry of reconciliation to reunite people with their loving Heavenly Father. So as a church, we're all about reconciling, inviting people into God's love that they might make peace and find healing for their brokenness in the presence of God. That's the reconcile bit. Next bit is the restore bit. It's three hours from Isaiah 61. It had to have R in it somewhere, didn't it? Restore in it somewhere to enable people to find healing for physical, emotional, or spiritual pain and to grow into living out their God-given design. The way that Isaiah 61 puts it is it, is it talks about um, a, a garland of ash, of, of I caught Jodie by surprise. I was hoping she was going to be my teleprompt. That was a spectacular failure. Talk, talks about a garland of joy instead of ashes. Um, it talks about a crown of beauty instead of, it, 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 instead of brokenness. Talk, talks about, anyway, look it up. You know it. Talks about a transformation that brings healing and restoration. And as a church, we know and we've seen God do incredible restoration in one another's lives. And we know that that is what God wants for the community around us, for the world around us. And the last R is to rebuild. The word that God gave me for this year, to positively contribute into the lives of others, living an outward focused and generous life, and so bringing community transformation. The reality of this last year is brokenness in people's lives and brokenness in our community and isolation and pressure, debt, hunger has increased. If ever there was a time that God was calling and inviting his people to join with them in a mission to begin to rebuild, it's now. So as Restore, we know that God has called us, everyone, every day, living on mission for Jesus everywhere. We know that the call comes from Isaiah 61, that we're called to reconcile, we're called to restore, we're called to rebuild. 
How do we do that? Well, we do that with another three letters. This time it's three C's. So three E's, three R's, three C's. So we do it through three C's. The three C's are connecting, contributing, and celebrating. What do we mean by that? Well, connecting, we mean this. We encourage everyone to be part of a restore group which provides a place of belonging, shared life, and spiritual growth. Church is not about a Sunday experience. It's about a whole life lived out in community. When you look at the books of, book of Acts, they lived house to house. They shared their meals together. They uh, shared their property together. It was a real community. And we want to invite the whole of Restore. We want to build the whole of Restore. As we move forward into this next season, we want to build it around deep, shared life connections. The easiest way into that is through a Restore group. We're really flexible on the Restore group because it's really a term we put around relationship. However that works to build that relationship, but you need to be, and we need together to be a shared life experience because that's how we demonstrate the love of God to our community. So it's about connecting. Secondly, it's about contributing. We believe everyone has God-given gifts and we grow most when we use these to serve others. Each Restore location has a vision to reach its local community and we encourage everyone to get involved in this mission. I'm going to look at Joshua chapter 1 just for a, a minute or two at the end. Not yet, but at the end. But in Joshua chapter 1, he calls the people and he says, it's time for everyone to cross over the river into the purposes of God, into the promises of God. In Ephesians chapter 4, when Paul talks about the church growing into the fullness of Jesus, he talks about that which every part of the body contributes and brings. And as a church, we're all about everyone given to the life of restore is a gift. Everyone given to life of the restore is a unique gift. And we need to embrace and celebrate that gift and put it together that we might be able to carry the good news of the kingdom of God across our communities and see rebuilding, see restoration, see transformation. And then the third C is by celebrating. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. We gather both in individual locations and also as a whole church to celebrate all that God is doing in and through us as restore and for vision and for worship. So like I said, we've been asking the Lord just really to sharpen us in terms of focus and vision and clarity as we see the new that the Lord is wanting to lead us into. And our sharpening of that three E's, have you got them? Everyone. Every day, everywhere. Three R's, reconcile, restore, rebuild. Three C's, the hows of how we do it, by connecting, by contributing, and by celebrating. Now, that's the uh, honing of the vision. What do our next steps look like? And we've been praying over, as I said at the very beginning, what has God been doing? And as we reboot church into this next season, what is God wanting us to emphasize, prioritize, if we're going to fulfill that calling that he's put over our life? Well, the beginning point is we're going to begin regathering this church on Easter Sunday. Why on Easter Sunday? Because Easter Sunday is when we celebrate resurrection. And in this next season, I believe the Lord is wanting to pour his spirit out on his church in a fresh way. I believe that the Lord is going to meet us with something fresh, like a fresh wind of the spirit. And we're going to begin entering into that on Resurrection Sunday. Now, we've got two uh, plans in terms of Sunday morning gatherings. One is uh, Albany, which is in the process of becoming a restore uh, congregation in Enfield Highway. Um, they're going to recommend, recommend Sunday morning services on Easter Sunday. It's a prophetic stance that the Lord is doing something new for us to step into in that service. The next week, from April the 11th, we're going to begin gathering a worshipping congregation in this place. So for the last year, this has looked like a, a, a TV studio. I tell you, this is not what I trained for. Um, I'm standing here this morning, one, two, three, four cameras. 
um, and uh, multiple screens in front of us. Uh, Jody's got an in earpiece. We didn't train for this. I started off preaching on a street corner with no ampli amplification and uh, certainly no TV cameras. We've had to set up as a, as, a, as a studio to be able to do church well in this season, and I'm so grateful for it. We want to step forward into becoming a worshipping congregation again. One of the reasons that we're having our love offering, our gift day, um, that we're kicking off, our gift week that we're kicking off later, is because we know now the equipment we need to be able to film not what we've done over the last year, but what we're stepping into for the next season. So from April 11th onwards, we're going to have the ability for people to be able to book. We won't be able to take lots of people to begin with, but some people will be able to put in this place and have the beginnings of starting a worshipping congregation. So we'll be led from back there, not here, because we need the space. So we'll have different forms of cameras because what we're filming will look different and we want to buy equipment that we can train other people up to use that isn't Robert's best uh, BBC uh, standard uh, equipment, as fantastic as that is. But we need to empower everyone to be a part of what we're doing. And so we're going to begin the process of regathering on a Sunday morning at Albany um, and uh, here then in Woodford. But as we move into this next season, there's four things we want to prioritise. And the four things we're going to prioritise is this. So it's a four-part strategy. There's the live streams on a Sunday morning. There's local homes. There's local gatherings. And there's family gatherings. Now, what do I mean by that? Well... We're going to continue the live stream from here on a Sunday morning forever, we think. One of the upsides of the last year is we've had to step into the digital age. And normally what happens is uh, the rest of society steps into what is new, and the church normally lags behind by a generation, sometimes by more than that, and if we're not careful, becomes obsolete. Actually, what's happened over the last year is we've had to step into the digital age, now, the reality is the next generation have only grown up on the digital age. They manage their technology. They use their technology in a way that a generation like me is still struggling to catch up with. We need to recognize the world has changed and we need to speak the language that the world is speaking now if we're going to be able to reach them for Jesus. And so we need the ability to do things like podcasts. We need the ability to have catch-up church. You know, on, on, when I was young, in fact, not that many years ago, I was still young then, but not many years ago, you had to wait each week for the next episode of your favourite series. Now you can just download the whole lot from Netflix. It is revolutionising how we're going to disciple into the future. So grateful to God for Right Now Media and the number of small groups that have been using it and the way that youth groups have. Our ability to gather by technology. I love the fact that on a Sunday morning, uh, people in from South Africa, hi Sue, I will get to have a Zoom with you before too long. But it's great that people from around the world can join with us on a Sunday morning. The world has changed. And uh, one of the reasons we're taking up a, a love gift offering is to help step us as a church into that uh, modern age, into the digital age, so we can begin to speak the language of the culture that we want to reach. And it's a, it's a one-off expenditure to take us into being able to speak that language and develop it. So live streaming is here to stay, on-demand church is here to stay, and it's one of the things that we're going to emphasise and we need to lean into and embrace for the next season. Because it wasn't just a year of interruption, it was a new way of doing things that God has been at work in. Second part of our strategy is all about local homes. Do you know what has blessed me over this last year has been the number of people that have turned up on my doorstep Fran Sutton Smith with brownies this week. What an amazing love gift. We have, ha as church, because we haven't been able to gather on a Sunday morning, we've had to do relationship in other ways. We've had to take our exercise together. We've had to do uh, Zoom small groups. We've had to turn up on one another's doorsteps and give gifts and be blessing to one another and have relationship. That has been a big win for us. It's grounded us in our local community, but it's taken our relationship away from being a cup of tea at the end of a Sunday morning into, oh, an everyday connecting. It's been such a gain 
Over the next season, we need to embrace that and develop that. You will know Boris's roadmap uh, for at coming out of lockdown. The dates aren't uh, set in stone from it. They're a guideline. But from the 29th of March, two households can gather together outside. From the 29th of March, up to six people can gather together outside. Do you know, as a church, we need to lean into that. Where we've been desperate for relationship, desperate for connection, we need to start going for walks together, doing activities together, embracing that, because as a church, we're meant to be a community, not just a meeting. And so let's lean into that. Let's develop that. If you're part of a small group, encourage your small group to push into it. From the 17th of May, hopefully, we'll be able to mix two households. And uh, six people, the rule of six comes into play, indoors, hopefully. That means we'll be able to mix households and tune into live stream. That means we'll be able to do some physical gatherings in homes again. Let's not just wait for the church meetings to happen. Let's prioritise that and become an Acts 2 kind of church. And so as we look at the lifting of, of restrictions, let's, let's make it a deepening of relationship not a weakening of relationship, because we focus on one thing. So we're stepping into the digital age as we move forward, because we'll be able to reach more people through it. Secondly, we want to go deeper in relationships, so we need to take the opportunity of opening up our homes and valuing that and embracing it and going deeper in relationship with one another. Third, we are going to be starting some gatherings. As I said, we've got our Sunday morning gatherings that we're going to begin at Albany and we're going to begin here. We're also going to create some other opportunities to gather. Now, I just need to do a little reality check over gatherings. Whenever I talk to people, what everyone says to me is what I so miss is corporate worship. And I miss the relationship. In fact, if we're honest, we miss the hugging. Not just Mel Larg, we all miss the hugs. The truth is, as we go through the roadmap to gathering, we're not going to be able to sing together in those meetings. We're not going to be able to do children's work in the way that we could before in those meetings. We're going to have to socially distance. So although we are going to begin to gather, know from the word go, the way that we can gather is not what we really carry in our heart. I think if we go into it with that expectation and understanding, we won't be disappointed when we get there. And uh, what we're looking at doing is creating, probably it will be um, initially some Sunday afternoon gatherings, and they will be opportunity to gather, but they'll be more localised. Why will they be more localised? Well, for two reasons. One is it's easier to do that safely with a limited, a restricted number of folk. And again, there'll be a booking in system. There'll have to be a booking in system. It's easier to keep everyone safe and do everything within the guidelines well if we do it on a smaller scale. What's the other reason? It gives us an opportunity to more localised gather so we can begin asking God, God, how can we reach out to this specific community? So we're going to have Sunday morning gatherings in Albany. We're going to have Sunday morning uh, congregations here. Um, as I say, people will be masked up. The most they'll be able to do is hum along in the worship because we're not allowed to sing. So it won't be church as we know it, but it will be a start of the church rebooting in the resurrection power of Jesus. The Sunday afternoon gatherings, we're looking initially at three. Uh, we're still working on venues for that. One of the uh, blessings of us as a church is we don't have our buildings. Uh, one of the uh, challenges of that means that we're dependent on other people being willing to open up and rent their buildings to us. And coming out of a pandemic, people aren't always as quick to do that. So we are still working and praying this through. In our world, though, we'd love to begin three gatherings. They won't necessarily happen every week, but the live stream will be there every week. The three additional gathering points we're going to bring in, um, probably on a Sunday morning, as I say, number one in Winchmore Hill, where we have an existing congregation. Number two in the Loughton area. Now, we're, we're actually thinking, if we were going to transform the Loughton community, what would be the best place to do it? 
And uh, we're so grateful to God that he's given us the use of the community centre on the Oakwood Hill Estate. It's really interesting that Jesus came to be good news to the poor and every index of deprivation, the part of the Loughton community that scores highest on it is the Oakwood Hill Estate. And the Lord has given us the use of a community centre in the middle of that estate. Now, what's also interesting about the Oakwood Hill Estate is there's no bus service from there on a Sunday. So we love people, we care for people, we serve them during the course of the week. How are we going to introduce them to Jesus on a Sunday? If it's over half an hour walk to the venue that we're going and there's no buses. Either we've all got to get people carriers and be willing to, to travel down there and take people, which is quite hard in a pandemic, or else we find a location a little bit nearer to them. And so we're knocking on a few doors and saying, if we're going to really, if we're serious about community transformation, what would be the best venue to reach the local community around the Debden Loughton area? And we'll tell you how that process goes over the next few weeks. The other area that we're looking at creating a gathering is the Thaden Epping area. I could give you a long story. I haven't got enough time on a Sunday morning for that. What's been interesting over the last six months, there's a couple of, there's about three, I, I think, have been God things, which have included people in the Thaden Epping area stepping forward and saying, I think that we should be looking at a gathering in this area. And so we're knocking on some doors and seeing about that. What I'm interested in that is we have a number of people at the moment who commute to Loughton from Harlow and Epping and Thaden. In the next five years, there's going to be a, a, a significant expansion in Harlow. Lots of new homes are going to be built there. What if we dreamt of being a church that helped reach the communities of Thaden and Epping and Harlow, and in time, as Harlow increases significantly in size, we were there as the body of Christ, as the church of Jesus, to welcome and reach out because as a church, we welcome everyone and invite them to walk with Jesus every day and see transformation everywhere. And so we're investigating uh, options on gatherings in those places. We'll let you know as soon as we have them. But remember, it's part of a wider strategy. The live stream's gonna continue, we'll be there every week. We need to push into relationship in terms of our everyday life and in our homes. We need to have a more localized, community-focused gatherings. They, like I say, they won't feel like a Sunday morning. They'll have to be different. They'll have to be structured differently. And then the last thing is we're going to look at restore-wide family gatherings. Again, another gain of this last year has been the fact that it really feels like we're one church. People from Albany and Enfield and, and Loughton and Woodford all talking together, all joining on Zooms together, all being part of one church. And so as we head towards restarting church, we want to hopefully, and we'll be heading towards the summer then, so uh, if nothing else, we'll be able to do some bigger outdoor events, like have some family days. Hopefully we'll be able to have some restore-wide celebrating and joining together. Just over a year ago, I went to visit Jackie Pullinger in Hong Kong, and I was amazed with the way that they worked with the poor and the broken and saw real-life transformation. If you heard me talk about that, in fact, I think one of the last meetings we had together was the first opportunity we had to share about what God had spoken to us about that time. We talked at that time about the fact that Jackie was planning on coming to the UK last July. The good news is that Jackie has just moved it back to this July. And God willing, COVID restrictions willing, Jackie Pullinger and a team will aim to be with us on the 15th and 16th of July to share their heart with us, and I believe help us catch something new. And if everything lines up okay, and like I say, we're all dependent on a, a whole load of restrictions and, and everything else that is beyond, feels like it's beyond our ability to control, but it may well be that that will be our first family-wide gathering as we enter out of lockdown. I think that's significant. I think God's at work. I think God wants us to catch something. Now, in the next couple of days, we're going to send out a survey to you all. And a bit like the census, you know, you had to fill it in. That was all about last night, wasn't it? So I hope you've done it yet. Well done, Nigel, for doing yours this morning while you're waiting for church to start. If you haven't done your census yet, you need to do it quickly. Just as important as the census, we're going to send you out a survey because we need to know 
where would you be willing to gather over the next season? Would you be willing to put your kids into kids' ministry? Where would you be able to serve to help us facilitate all of this? You know, on a Sunday morning here, we have a, a small crew of five or six people. We can't do all those gatherings off the back of that. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we can't. We're going to need you to come and serve. And so over the next few days, we're going to be sending out a survey and saying, uh, are you happy to gather? If so, in what form? We're going to ask you questions to get your feedback so we can work together as a community to take our best next steps together. Now, after all of that, I'm doing well to get through all of that, I tell you. Um, you're thinking, why on earth was Tobias speaking from Joshua 1 when that's all you've covered, Ian? Well, I'll tell you why. If there's one passage that God has spoken over my life, it's Joshua chapter 1. Why is it significant? Well, because Joshua was the man that God called to lead the people of God into taking the promised land. Moses was the man that God raised up to take them out of slavery, to lead them through 40 days in the desert. It wasn't a fun journey, but 40 uh, years in the desert, not days. Could have been 40 days, but the way that they lived made it 40 years. God used Moses to pull them out of slavery and to help them to leave behind some of the barriers to moving into the promises of God. Then God raised up Joshua to say, now's the time, let's take the promised land. Joshua chapter 1 is God speaking to Joshua and saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now there's a new day. But if you look at the whole of the book of Joshua, it's really interesting because the first 12 chapters, Joshua leads the people as one combined unit. And they cross the Jordan River together. They fight the first battles together. In fact, every part of the journey from Joshua 1 to Joshua 12, they do as one people. Then you get to Joshua chapter 13, and Joshua says, look, I'm getting older now. Comments, please, on the chat stream. Um, I have more gray hair now than I had a year ago, and I've earned every one of these, the wisdom that God has given me. But they come to a point in Joshua 13, and Joshua says, I'm getting older. We're not going to be able to do this as one people. And he speaks to the tribes, and he says, look at the land, see which bit God has called you to take, and go and take it. And the next 12 chapters, the second half of the book of Joshua, is the story of each tribe rising up and saying, I'll take that mountain, I'll take that valley, I'll take that bit of the land. I believe what the Lord is speaking to us in this season as we step out of lockdown is he's saying it's a time as the people of God to rise up. And he's saying, what's your piece of ground? What's your piece of land? What's your part of this promised land? And I believe he's wanting, us, he's wanting to resource us from the centre, from the heart of who Restore is. But he's wanting us to say, this is my mountain, I'm going to go and get it. And if you follow through by Joshua chapter 14, the oldest man still alive is Caleb. And he has that glint in his eye as he looks at Joshua and he says, I'm just as fit, I'm just as strong in the spirit of God as I ever was. And this mountain belongs to me. And he goes with his family and he conquers it. I believe this morning the Lord is calling us and saying, there's a mountain that I want you to take. It might be a mountain in Epping. It might be a mountain in Harlow. It might be a mountain in Woodford. It might be a mountain in your place of work. It might be a mountain in your school. But there's a mountain, there's a piece of ground that the Lord wants you to begin to pray into, to take your stand on and say, I'm going to see the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Jesus come in this area. Because Jesus wants to reach everyone he wants us to live with him every day and see restoration come everywhere. My encouragement to you as we move forward is, where is the Lord wanting to use you to bring the kingdom of God? Because that's the kind of church that the Lord has called us to. We want to stand shoulder to shoulder. We want to encourage. We want to support. We want to cheer one another on. But we want to say, it's time to take the land. This community, this city, this nation needs Jesus. It's time to rise up as the people of God 
Embrace our calling and step into it. Did you notice in Joshua chapter 1, three times God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Three times God promises he will be with him. It's okay to have wobbly knees. It's okay to think, I don't know whether I can do this. It's okay. In fact, in the kingdom of God, sometimes the greatest qualification, the best qualification, is to have no idea how you're going to do it. Just a sense in your heart that God's calling me to it. Because in those moments, we can't depend on our own strength, our own ability, our own intellect. We have to lean into him. And as we lean into him, so he comes and stands with us. So we get our courage and our strength and our hope from him. And so we see God go ahead of us. And then work through us to see his kingdom come. Let's pray. Really believe this is a new season the Lord is opening up. That's, it's no coincidence that spring is coming. It's no coincidence the sun is shining outside. It's a new season the Lord is inviting us to step into. With the new season, there's a fresh blowing of the spirit of God. And uh, what I hear in my spirit is the Lord is saying, wake up, rise up. I believe for some of us, we've been living under uh, uh, darkness uh, to a certain extent over the last year. We've been living under depression. We've been living under a sense of hopelessness. And I believe the Lord is saying, today you can rise up. In me, you're bigger than that. It's time to arise, shine. Let my spirit work on you. Let my spirit work through you. Arise in the power of my spirit. Lord, in these moments, Lord, we want to yield to you afresh. We want to invite you, spirit of the living God, will you come? Lord, I want to do the same as Jody, Lord. I, I want to kneel, Lord, at your feet. Father, I, I sense, Lord, what you're calling us to, Lord. But Lord, I know I can't get there, Lord, with, with my effort. I can't get there with my ideas. I can see what you're wanting to do. But Lord, I need you. Lord, I need to surrender my life to you again. Lord, I need the power of your spirit. Lord, I need your grace, Lord. I need your love, Lord. I need your empowering, Lord. And so Holy Spirit, will you come? Will you breathe on us right now? Right now, spirit of the living God. Thank you, Isaiah 61 starts with the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We invite you. Will you blow afresh across Restore? Will you blow afresh into every home right now? Will you blow afresh into every one of our lives? Will you blow afresh the, the power of your Spirit right now? Right now. Right now. The musicians are going to lead us in worship. They're going to uh, lead us in, in the spirit of the living God. Let's just, where you are, let's reach out for the spirit of God. Let's reach out and invite God's spirit to come. Let's reach out for resurrection power to rebirth the church in this new season.